Good evening, everybody. Hello, my name is Alan, and on behalf of the crew of the show, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. Tonight, we're doubly honored to have the people and the, the experiences that we have with us tonight. Our, our first guest is, is Bill uh, Casalino, who's written an extraordinary book uh, called The Path. And, you know, I've been talking a lot about when we were setting up for the new season during, you know, the hiatus period, how just enormous numbers of, of, of information and books and tapes were, were sent our way and I'm just so just so shocked and amazed and, 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 and blissed out about the power of, of the gifts that are given from all over the all over the country we have been getting people who've been contacting us from all over the country with extraordinary tales and gifts and one of the first books I got during this period was Bill's book he got our name out of a, a catalog and, and sent the book The Path to us and as soon as I as soon as I, I saw it and as soon as I, I looked through it I said you know I have to call this person and when I did we just immediately connected and I knew that if we could work out a date where Bill could come down here and, and he did he flew down from Washington State to be on the show on Bridging Heaven and Earth I knew it would be an extraordinary show and, and just a wonderful experience for me and for all those out in the audience so we're really honored to have Bill with us, and I think his story is told in a humble and powerful way, and I think you'll feel the same way. And then what we have also, which we've never done before on Bridging Heaven and Earth, is we have uh, uh, videotapes and audio tapes of Kate Wolf. Now, Kate Wolf uh, left her body in 1986, but her music was so incredible, and one of the people on the show uh, uh, turned us on to it and said you have to see these tapes and hear this music and I'm sure you'll want to share it with with all the people who who watch and love Bridging Heaven and Earth so we did that and I think you'll be really amazed and her family was just so cooperative and we're, we're honored to have Kate Wolf's music on the show tonight so I think if you just settle in and relax you'll have a, a really wonderful experience tonight. So please join me as we usually do at this time to set a tone for the show and to have an experience of the love within us and to get ready for you know, Bill and, and Kate's music. Please join me in a short meditation. Thank you. Thank you. So let me just tell you a little bit, a bit about Kate before uh, we play the first video. Uh, Kate uh, was just coming into her own in the, in the 70s and 80s and was just becoming increasingly popular and was starting to uh, gather international, certainly national and international uh, uh, claim and, and, and fame in, in about 1986 when she was diagnosed with acute leukemia and basically she just passed on the end of that year in 1986 but her music really lives on on her web page on her music and we're just delighted and honored to bring Kate Wolf's music to you so the first videotape is Brother Warrior so I hope you enjoyed as much as we did so thank you
gentle warrior with your heart like gold and a rainbow in your eyes brave companion do you see a world shining in the sky with your body dancing like an arrow spreading joy beneath your feet and your hands the wave like tall grass in the wind as you speak with the shyness of a small child and the wisdom of a saint I tell you now there is no reason to be afraid Brother warrior, there are none of us who walk this path alone. Spirit healer is the only life that we have ever known. And I see your smile in the sunlight. I hear your songs in the rain. me feel your love and know your pain at this time when the earth is waking to the dawn of another age I tell you now there is no reason to be afraid Hi, well, I'm here with Bill. Thanks for coming, Bill. Oh, my pleasure. So why don't you just give people a little experience and a little background in, you know, in your history with what got you here. You can start at this lifetime. <laughs> Bill could go back, so we'll just start here at this lifetime. Start at the beginning, you think? <laughs> no, not in the beginning was the word. Start a little later than that. Well, um, it's been a lifetime of uh, searching for my, myself, you know, along the path. Uh, I started when I was very young. Uh, I was born telepathic and uh, raised in a in a Christian or Lutheran environment that uh, kind of would want to suppress that that gift. So I didn't really understand it, and I had to learn to control. So it was it. more looked at as an aberration rather than as something to nurture and. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. It's, it's they, had other name, they had other names for yeah, it, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> we won't speak of those names. <laughs> but it was a natural uh, phenomenon. And as I progressed in, uh, in my belief, I came to the point where I felt that after a period of time, the reason for this and the, and the, the secrets behind it would be revealed through the church. But that didn't happen. It you know, just kept on going. And uh, I kept growing. And I grew kind of away from organized religion and began to
focus my attention on uh, other religions and other phenomena. I started basically with psychic phenomena and um, healing. Healing was a big thing for me when I was mm -hmm. little. So as I grew up yeah, and, and matured, uh, I just began to reach out farther and farther. And I became a hypnotherapist. I traveled to the Philippines. I worked with Catherine See, Coleman. Yeah, you traveled to the Philippines to do the, the psychic surgeries. I mean, you were involved in them in some way. I mean, not exactly. My, yeah, my intention in going was to do research. Uh -huh. You know, um, I'd already developed to the point where I think that uh, you can recognize that healings take place in any belief system. You know, regardless of what you believe in, if you believe in it strong enough, you're going to have healing, you're going to have joy, you're going to have love. Um, so it wasn't as much to, to learn that, learn that but, but find out what it was right. all about. Uh, most of the, of the research uh, that resulted in the path was that type of an approach. You know, what about this is uh, valid and how does it interrelate with with other belief systems. What, what are the common denominators? What do we share in common? What do we all? share in common right. with our beliefs? And uh, my wife and I both uh, are hypno hypnotherapists, so we did a lot of research together. And uh, a few years ago, probably two years ago, um, I was just, I could say, led to begin writing, mm -hmm. to begin putting all this information together and some people uh, looked at it and said, that's a book. Mm -hmm. Right, it was an interesting story that all of a sudden people were coming that we want to yeah. publish it, that we want to put this out. Right. You did this as part of like a class or a workshop or something other than writing it for a book, right? I was just uh, developing the material to a point where I could kind of show a progression, you know, uh -huh. how, how, how we got where and, we were. And you used are. a lot of interrelationship between religion and science and spirituality oh, to bring it to like the point kind of we've talking about. Absolutely. See, because Bill came into from Washington State yesterday and we, you know, we spent the last couple of days together, so we've been talking a lot. So, yeah, so tell, you know, tell the audience that story about how you, you want to, you know, mix everything and bring it to, to a sense of almost like completion. The, um, the foundation's there, and where, wherever we are, we see a little bit of it. You know, we, we approach it through uh, our belief, our reality, and uh, that's, that's how we see it. That's valid for us. But if, if we understand the principles underlying these things, then we're right at the top. We can look down and we can see all of these things active in any belief system, all of these uh, basic principles active in any belief system. And why don't you describe what what the the basic activities are okay the path is a is a guide a step-by-step -step guide to lead us to an understanding of how we got where we are and there's a lot of books that tell you this is what you should be doing you know mm -hmm. and this right. is the direction you should go and when we read those and we feel good about them we begin to practice them mm -hmm. and um, but we never really know how we got where we are. So in other words, so we're it's practicing like the, another thing that we just believe in and we don't understand. So you're like shining light on, right. on the darkness in a sense. And it, it's uh, developed around uh, how our mind presents reality to us, how we develop a belief system, how we come to, to believe certain things and reject others, how we begin to rely on the five physical senses and uh, basically filter out the rest of the information from the world around us how that process takes place step by step. And when we begin to understand it, then we can see it happening in our everyday lives. You know, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I'm kind of losing awareness of what's going on around me. Well, that's natural. There's nothing wrong with that. That's mm -hmm. natural. But as I focus my attention on my, on my five physical senses and the world I'm living in, then I naturally lose touch of all the other information, all the other... Um, the the of, magnitude yeah, and the magnificence of, 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 yeah, of yeah. awareness that, right. that's available to me. Right. When I understand that that's natural, you know, that that's a natural process of the mind creating reality, reality for me, then I can become sensitive to these other things. I can take a moment and say, oh, this is okay, but, you know, there's more. I can expand my awareness. I can expand right. my consciousness. And when, once I learn to be sensitive to that, then I can take certain steps, certain progressive steps to lead me back to that state of awareness that's uh, 
that's more than just the five senses, more than just the physical self, mm -hmm. I can begin to uh, take those steps back. So would you say that in the common systems are the five senses, you know, in any system that that's what we, you know, come back to? What, what is the point that, that you could say, like, human beings almost across the board, what are their, like, the root systems where the mind comes in and says this is the... Sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell are the biggies, you know, they're the because five, that's the five physical, physical senses, right, and that's how we learn to interact with our environment. Well, when a baby's born into the world, they're aware of, a, of everything that's going on around them. But the only way they can get interaction from their parents is through, you know, cry, making noises, crying, and making physical contact, and responding to physical stimuli. So it doesn't take a long period of time before so they, they learn. They the, learn the that Pavlovian. That's, that's what that's what gets me a response. So that's what I better do. Right, and, yeah. we, and we continue that mm -hmm. forward. But the the rest of it's always there. Right. I mean, we go. And there's nothing wrong with no, doing it that way, except that we except we forget the other. We tend to forget. Yeah. Right. We tend to forget. So, and also the path has has means of, of besides shining light of that, uh, to begin to unravel that to a certain extent. Right. Each of us have developed uh, our own path, and it's an internal thing. Something that we've, um, beliefs that we've developed, expectations that we've developed, likes and dislikes, uh, sensitivities and, and dissens or unsensitivities, and we can work those out, you know, understand how they develop and why we're here as we just open up and allow our mind to travel the path back. But more than that, we begin to realize the holographic nature of ourselves, of the energy that makes up Define all that is. Define holographic as you would use it. Holographic, a holographic principle is a scientific principle that everything is energy in nature and that energy exists everywhere uh, from a scientific standpoint, energy is interconnected. That means it's connected throughout time without time. So the energy that's here right now is in the same time, space continuum, as you will, if you will, is this energy that is at the edge of the universe. And it's non-local, which means that the energy right here, you and I, is in the same place. Now this energy exists in a, what scientists call a vector state, and it doesn't really become a physical reality, a flesh and blood thing, until we're in a kind of an interactive state, a physical state of observation with it. Mm -hmm. But once we realize that we're basically energy beings, we're spiritual energy beings, and that we share that holographic oneness with all the energy that is, then we can begin to go beyond our own limitations. And the path offers steps for developing that also. It also offers um, a very precise system of meditation that's designed to expand and bring a person to balance. It uh, gives instruction on uh, focused breathing for walking the path and instruction on luc lucid dreaming for walking the path. It gives us, uh, we can practice right here, practice just in our every day-to-day -day experiences, as we we've been doing the, for the last two We don't days. have to go to the Himalayas. We don't have to go to the Himalayas. That's, a, that's another thing about the holographic principle, is every place is the center. Every place is yeah, where every, it's at. A lot of, a lot of neat, the story about neat old dudes have said that. <laughs> about pointing the feet towards, uh, towards the... That's your story. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, the, our story is, um, it's disrespectful to sleep with your feet towards the temple because that's a... That's where God. That's where lives. God lives, and the uh, the question arises then: uh, Where isn't God? Uh, you know, where Muhammad, should I, where the way should I, I put my feet? Right. <laughs> if you show me where God isn't, then I won't. Yeah. You know, then I'll lay my feet that yeah, way. Right. Other way, right? And uh, so the response has been extraordinary. I mean, I, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people who I've shown the book to, and there's something about it that, you know, when I got it, I mean, I called you the next day yeah. and I said, you know, when can you come down? You know, and like the response has been wonderful. It's, it's new, it's just out, and we just, we just now have uh, got a distributor, New Leaf, to um, begin to take it around to the bookstores. So. Mm -hmm. But and you, the response you would be is, doing workshops, I mean, if there's a call for it, you'd be doing workshops and book signings and getting around and you know, speaking on shows. Well, like of this. course, 
Yeah, right. absolutely. Just because, I mean, it, it was written to, to share with people. Right. It's, uh, it's not limited to any one belief system. It fits, almost, wherever you're at right now, you can find yourself in the path. You know, you can find... How can you not there. be? How can you not be, right? right. You know, you're <laughs> somewhere. In other words, you're not outside of God's love. You're not outside of the energy that's everything. No. And no one can be. It's just we forget right. that. What happens in that process of forgetting is we develop a, a whole mental gestalt or, or structure of, of thought that follows us after we leave here. And if we haven't gotten to the point where we can recognize our true oneness with, with the all that is while we're here, then we take that limitation with us and we end up you know, coming back for another experience. Right. To try and but it's bad it enough being here without it because you feel separate. You do. Separation is the yeah, first, I mean, what yeah, a the drag. first feeling of it. And you feel, you know, fearful and, I mean, how wouldn't you? you You're hurtling through you space way, on a but ball. It's miserable. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. Exactly. So we have, we have an opportunity then to practice that balance here. And uh, it's an important thing that we remember during transition, you know, that, that our expectations aren't for something to immediately change because our, our I mean, are we, aren't we always transitioning? We're always changing. What I mean is transition between the physical and the, and the next realm at the time right. when we leave the physical right. body. But so. I would say, wouldn't you agree that if we learn how to live, then we'll know how to die. And if oh, we don't absolutely. know how to live, we ain't going to know how to die. Absolutely. So what's the big deal? You know? Absolutely. So I think now uh, we have, if you guys are queued up for it, uh, the second song from uh, Kate. Now, this is an audio tape. And we're going to do some, uh, some special effects on the set. And we have uh, Kate's album covers. And uh, again, I think she's just fantastic. So just listen to the, the purity of this voice. And it's called, She Rises Like a Dolphin. So Kate Wolf, She Rises Like a Dolphin. OK, so thank you and enjoy. Shadows like a painter's palette night. Her hair fans out around her, floating like a crown. She plays on the water and lets it pull her down. Sometimes she swims in moonlight with the stars high above. The night sounds of the water. Speaking soft of love Her skin turns to velvet As she feels the waters glide She loses all her boundaries On this magic carpet ride You see ripples on the water Watch the shadows dance Then she's diving down And you're looking through a glass Like a one-way mirror Her reflection's far below Where she was, she isn't now That's all you really know Two swimmers in the water One below the surface, one reaching for a hole. One floating freely, one trying not to drown. A dreamer with two faces, a dolphin and a clown.
hold her in a shallow pool Catch her in a waterfall You're thinking like a fool She'll strike for the horizon Like a ship out to sea Leaving just illusions That look like memories She wears the water like a mask A brand new suit of clothes A player on the stage An actress no one knows See her roll and tumble Falling like a clown Swimmer in the water that runs from higher ground. Hi, we're back. Well, that was really beautiful. Kate's songs just really, beautiful. really moved me. She's beautiful. So if you had a you know, tell people what, what, if there was one thing they could do or, or the first thing they could do to, to you know, awaken or, or shine light on that which would help them, how would you, how would you advise? Well, awareness starts with a change of attention. I think the first thing to do would be to start being aware of what's going on around you. Um, maybe we would want to stop looking for the negative. What's wrong with the world? Uh -huh. I mean, no matter where you're at, you're in the very center, in the very heart of God. You can't be out of place unless you perceive yourself out of place. So stop thinking maybe there's something wrong and start looking at what's right. And start seeing what's right in the world around you and what's right in other people. And then you maybe get a smile on your face, you know, and begin to grow and expand. The lessons and the meditations and the disciplines don't really mean a lot without the love that, that comes up from inside, you know. If you're doing something for your own spiritual growth, you're doing this for the spiritual growth of the world. But then you stop and think about it, everything's spiritual in nature. Everything. Spiritual growth doesn't start when you start meditating, you know. You were still growing spiritually when you were sucking beer through a straw. It just right. it doesn't make any difference where you're at. Mm -hmm doesn't make any difference at all. But when you begin to perceive yourself as, as at the very center, at the very heart of God, when you begin to acknowledge that that place exists within you, then you begin to open up and begin to grow and expand. Then the little things begin to fall into place. Um, you find out that um, you're in the right time and place to find the right job, you meet the right people, you um, turn the right corners. <laughs> Faith grows in the sense that you, 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 you know you'll get what you need yeah. when you need it, not what you want when you want it all the time, yeah. unless you can get those things that you, you don't want. I think, you, I think you've gotten what you needed all along, and what you needed was uh, to get to a point where you would turn your attention from self and ego to, out to uh, love and others. And so all those things you thought were negative turns were just getting to the spot where you could begin to turn outward rather than inward, you know. So maybe they were all right turns, I don't know. Right. Well, at some point, outward and inward right. are the same anyhow. Right. That's, because that's part of the illusion. That right. It looks duality. like. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, I mean, your book kind of like leads people, just shines light on, how would you describe it? The, uh, not quite the illusion, not quite the duality, not quite... How would you say, what does it shine light on? What does it offer people in terms of like an awakening experience? I think uh, most people that have read it, what, the, what they say is that the biggest thing it has done was identified the fact that they are not powerless, but they, are, they have complete control of their own spiritual growth, their own salvation, and their own destiny. It's always been there and the path has brought them to that recognition that the master that they need in order to gain this freedom is right here inside and that the path has shown them how that can, master can be recognized and how it can be nurtured and how it can grow. On the other side of that people say I can no longer be comfortable with 
things from an outside source. I'm now responsible. I'm now be, the, it, be it the archangels, be it the right. guru, anything. And that's because fine. All I could, the love is still there, and I can still interact, and right. uh, telepathy is still valid, and healing right. is still great. But the bottom line is to put my foot on the path for myself is putting my brother's foot on the path for him. You know, I can't love my brother unless I love myself. I can't love the world. And you can't have world. compassion right. for... And I can't really have that love and that compassion, that love that goes beyond emotion, until I can recognize that mm -hmm. godness within myself, that right. master within myself. Mm -hmm. uh, now, would you say that's, it's both a belief, and, but more important, it's an experience of that? I think an experiential awareness is what I would that call would it, an experiential describe. awareness. Uh, a belief, you can believe in it, and you can even understand it intellectually. But until it's real for right. you, until you've realized right. it. Right. And one thing we've tried to do when we present the material in the path is, is present things in ways that people can compare what's happening to me now with what's happening on the path. The rules that govern the universe um, that are the same as the rules that govern the comings and goings here on the earth, you know. The rules of the spirit, the laws of the spirit are the same. And they're reflected in everything they do. They're reflected in relationships, they're re reflected in reaping and sowing, they're re reflected in the cycles, they're reflected in, uh, you know, the oceans, the every, everywhere. How can it not be? You can't, if you just look, it's, right. it's, it's obvious, it's all right. around us. And when you, when you read these things, there's a lot of uh, good practical of examples that probably all of us have experienced. But it's just in one place. That, right. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. So It's I, been fun. It's been a, 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 a fun journey to get to this point. And uh, I just want to, you know, make sure that you can't say you don't want to take it too seriously, but uh, you really can. You can be too mental and too serious about it. Too mental and too serious about it, and not have enough really the joy, joy inside that right. comes from it right. as a result of it. Right. I mean, when you, when the child wakes up and realizes that he's always been in the father's arms, you know. Exactly. <laughs> right. How can we be up, if you're, if you're five years old to five hundred? Right. How right. can you be anything but the child of right. God? I mean, it's yeah, absolutely. It's, but you see, see, it's interesting to me. It's like that has to really be experienced, and that. You know, whatever tools, whatever you know, whatever way you would do, it is an experience. Yeah, yeah, it has to be experienced because until you really know it, from, like from within, or, or you know, realize it as part of your being, then it's just an idea. Yeah. And you know, we have all the ideas, but they they kind of all don't line up right. until you you know. And that's that's what I really felt was like a powerful thing about your book is that it was really it stated it and then it like led people, you know, and that was that was the you know, really beautiful part. And, and see, so, yeah, go ahead. There's very few, very little that's new. All of the teachings are teachings that are thousands of years old. They're very basic teachings, very simple. There's nothing complicated about them. There's l new light shed on, on things that have been misunderstood like karma and reincarnation and um, the transpersonal realm, the layers of awareness, the chakras. That's all discussed, right. but it's all simplified to the point where it becomes so easy to understand that it's just, oh, oh yeah, you know, and no biggie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, let's get on with the, with the inner growth. Right. So, would you say, I mean, in my experience is, would you agree that, like, the end result is love, the end result is compassion, the end right. result is joy? And we don't want to make the mistake of of uh, juxtaposing love with hate or good with evil. No, right. Because we're right. talking about right. a love that contains both of these. Right. We're, we're talking about the love that contains the all, the love that, that transcends what we know as emotional love. Right. Love, the love that is more towards compassion or more towards acceptance. I would say even more of understanding and inner knowing than it is, uh, you know, what we would call it. A fluffy love. <laughs> or even like the gifts that can come from like certain experiences and you know the spiritual Absolutely. gifts. Absolutely. That it's a, it's a simple, the way you describe the love or compassion or understanding. That's where the power is. That's where the power yeah, is. Yeah, that's where the power is. And psychic phenomena, things like healing and things like telepathy and levitation, astral projection, those are all valid, but they're mental. We don't want to mistake those for spiritual growth because those can all be done without love. You know, without exactly. without compassion. Yeah, exactly. 
Those can be performed just like any mental feat for personal gain. Even a physical healing can. Mm -hmm. Right. So, or ego. Or ego, yeah. I mean, that's a good one here. Right. <laughs> that's come up a few times in the UV condition. Ego who? <laughs> yeah, right. Ego when, you know. It's like, <laughs> you know, somebody used to talk about that, uh, you know, the ego is like the next biggest thing in the world besides God. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, it's like there's one drop and then the ego stops. The, you know. So it's like, so if <coughs> you say that, uh, I mean, like in, in the, you know, we've talked a little because we were talking about the, the, the disciples of Carlos Castaneda, Castaneda being on the show and the new mm -hmm. book he's come out with. And he talks about stopping the world, which is basically, you know, quiet the internal yeah. dialogue. Because that's how we carry all the patterns and the ideas of who we are and how the world exists. Right. So that... I would say stopping the world is, would be the first step. But in spirit, there's motion. There's never... Um, a static state doesn't exist in spirit. And we're creative by nature. We're mm -hmm. creators. So to say that... Um, stop the world and, and let it lie right no, 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 there. I think this, when he says this stopping the world, thing. is stopping you know, the internal dialogue. I okay, think. you can stop that, mm -hmm. but I think that would, that would drift towards a, uh, maybe a lack on the other end. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with a physical manifestation. There's nothing wrong with a physical body. There's nothing wrong with... Uh, no, I don't think... I, in my reading of the, the Don Juan books, he, he didn't mean it like that. He's, he ta he's talking about the internal dialogue. Just the internal dialogue. It doesn't mean action doesn't take place. Because act, what he was saying, I think, is that action could take place from another place, and that's my experience. You don't need to have it come from necessarily what we call the intellect or the mind. It can come from, like, you know, a flow of movement, a flow of uh -huh. love. So I think that's what he meant, is that it was a step to, to coming into Absolutely. that like inner Absolutely. knowing and moving from there. Not that you'll you know, s stop doing and being, you know, just sit and meditate in the Himalayas, but you'll be moved from something other than what we call reason or ideas in a way. You know, it will be moved from, uh, the way I experience it is more from the heart. Uh-huh, the heart. Or, yeah. In other words, like you're less there than your identity is not there in the same way it was. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, how would you describe that? Is that your experience, or would you describe um, it differently? I think we're probably looking at the same thing from a different perspective. To stop the internal dialogue um, is to shut down mind. And mind is a valid function of spirit. It's the beginning of creation. The thought is the beginning of creation. Mm -hmm. So it would be a place to start, to start with that stillness. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be a danger in resting there because then we drift towards awareness and totally away from experience and we'd be just as off balance, mm -hmm. immersed in awareness as mm -hmm. we are here immersed yeah, I know, in experience. You know, I know what you mean, but I think in this, in, in on earth at this time, that you know, people say to me, when, you know, sometimes I'll teach them meditation, what if I meditate too much and I, I say, don't worry about it. Yeah. It's not to worry quite yet. Not, You're not going to go to that end. At not this, today. Right? I think you got a little time. You'll, you'll grow into it. Not, not to today. worry. Uh, okay, so I think now we're going to have the third set, and this is going to be a video of Kate, and it's called Give Yourself to Love. But before we do that, I'd like to read you something that uh, was from Kate's own words, and I think it just it sets a tone for the type of person that Kate really was. I live for a sense of a feeling of purple, purposefulness in this world, you know, that I could stop my life at any point and feel that my life has been worthwhile, that the people I've loved and my children have all reached a point where their lives are now going to come to fruit. And as far as something I live by, it's to try to be as alive as possible and feel free to make my mistakes and try to be as honest as I can with myself. And I think that's what really comes across in Kate's music, is that extraordinary honesty. So whenever we're ready in the booth, uh, let's do Kate's song, Give Yourself to Love. This actually is my favorite song, so thank you. Here's one you can sing with us. Give yourself to love if love is what you're after. Open up your hearts to the tears and laughter and give yourself to love, give yourself to love. Kind friends all gather round 
something I would say What brings us together here has blessed us all today Love has made a circle that holds us all inside Strangers are as family, loneliness can't hide You must give yourself to love Love is what you're after Open up your hearts to The tears and laughter And give yourself to love Give yourself to love I walk these mountains in the rain I've learned to love the wind Sunshine on a cloudy day, you stand before me now. So give yourself to love if love is what you're after. Open up your hearts to the tears and laughter, and give yourself to love. Give yourself to love. like a seed and love can't give you everything but it gives you what you need and love comes when you are ready love comes when you're afraid It'll be your greatest teacher the best friend you have made so give yourself Love is what you're after And open up your hearts to the Tears and laughter And give yourself to love Give yourself to love You must give yourself to love If love is what you're after Open up your hearts to Give yourself to love. I will thank you. And, and let me just, before I get back to, you know, to talking to Bill, to just remind anybody, everybody, if, if there's any information you want about Bill's book, The Path, about Kate's albums, about where Bill is going to be to do workshops or, or book signings, please call me, uh, Alan at 805-687-2053. That's Alan, 805-687-2053. And I'll be able to tell you any information you need, how to contact Bill, how to get in touch with Kate's family, uh, the websites, anything about that. So, you know, do that at any time. So. So, you know, we have maybe about 10 minutes left, you know, what would you think? Give yourself to love. Well, I mean, well. <laughs> there it is. So the show ends a little early today. And there, there's a picture, as you can see on the set, that's the, the beautiful and sim simple album, uh, the uh, book cover, The Path of uh, Bill's book. You know, it's interesting because we were talking about it a lot. I mean, that's really what it's about. It gives yourself to love. And then it, it looks so complicated. It does. <laughs> we, t we, especially in the West here, we tend to overcomplicate it. And we, we want to understand mentally. Um, I mean, it's like being childlike. How do we get to be childlike again? How do we go through the cycle of like growing up, being adult, right. being mature, having children? And, and Bill's been busy. He's, 
<laughs> raise <laughs> seven kids, yeah, more seven. or less. So. How do you have, I think, um, for, a, for a man to know that he has to crawl up on the master's lap to take a nap, to be able to totally shut down and let go, you know, just go to sleep. But the first step in that is not taking yourself as serious as you. Nobody's taking you seriously other than yourself. Everybody right. else, you know. Right. They're too busy taking themselves through to take me <laughs> seriously. What are you, crazy? Are you kidding? People are so concerned, <coughs> concerned about themselves. They barely right. know you're alive. Right. Right? Unless you're like drop dead in front there's of a good. There's a very good section <laughs> in the path on ego and uh, what ego is and what it does for us. And what it and doesn't do for us. And what it doesn't do for <laughs> us. And ego, is, ego doesn't disappear. People think that ego is a bad thing. It may be um, maybe a little expanded while we're here in the, in the material, but um, it follows us all the way till it finds a place at home in the heart, you know. It, it's a sense of self without a sense of selfishness. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to give up our identity. What we deceive ourselves into believing is that if we open up too much, everybody's going to know everything about us. But, but they already do. I mean, right, we're all one. Right. Who's fooling who? And, and on this level, they don't care. <laughs> no. So, I mean, in either case... They don't even case, want to know. Yeah, who don't <laughs> want to know? They're too interested in themselves to care about So don't... Uh, stop <laughs> taking what yourself... What are you worried about, right? <laughs> stop taking yourself too seriously and give yourself to love. You can have joy in every little thing. The successes, the failures, but the relationships, you know, with your wife, with your uh, husband, mm -hmm or your, uh, your friends, your families. And so you, would you say that's the first way to develop like a playfulness is to stop taking yourself so seriously? Oh yeah, absolutely. You're only fooling yourself. For a change, <laughs> right. For a change, you're fooling yeah. yourself. Now, there's a surprise. People that have been with us, uh, I know everybody that we've come in contact with in the last couple of days, one of the things that, that has uh, kind of set them back a, a step you introduced me as your guest and, and the author of a book, and it, it is now two or three minutes later we're laughing. We're right. laughing and joking about things that should be very serious. You right, know? Right. Yeah, it is weird for people. <laughs> it right? is. But because it is, this is a serious show and, you, and you're a serious, I'm and a you're talking about ser serious things. I'm very, this is very serious right. stuff. Right. <laughs> and it, you know, it is and it isn't, like yeah. everything else. It's like, how do you walk the razor's edge between serious and not serious? You know, well, you can't lose. I mean, exactly. Uh, exactly. You're, gonna, you're going to get whatever you focus your attention on is going to come into manifestation. Um, somebody's going to label it good, somebody else is going to label it bad, and you're probably going to label it yourself. It's all worse. It's a waste of energy. Yeah, absolutely. Just smile and do it. Yeah, and yeah, then move right, to the next and move, thing. And move on. <laughs> it's like you, and people have probably heard me talk about this show. You know, we do the show. The ten, you know, when we tape, it's from 9.30 to 10.30, the night of the show in Santa Barbara. And then 10.30, it's over. By 11, honest to God, we're out of here. And by 11.15, we're at Caro's eating. And it's like, then, you know, the next show happens. So it's like, it's one of what are we worried about? Yeah. You know? That one's gone. Yeah, it's gone. And you know, it's, it's in out. the can. And some, you look at later and go, my God, I was drooling. My God, the guess. You know, it's like, what happened? Here? <laughs> but it was beautiful. You know, and, and it really, is. all That's of them it. end up being beautiful. That's because the, the people come on, and they're really, who hasn't come on? I mean, if people have seen the show, who's not sincere, who's not beautiful, who's not, you know, believing in what they do with a passion? They believe it. And, and really, the and love great. manifests. That's great. Yeah, exactly. And very concerned. And one of the gentlemen I just met tonight, here on the set said that um, in response to the little bit of reading he had done in the past that uh, it, it's a way of uh, presenting deep complicated metaphysical I issues in a simple understandable way. <laughs> what is this show or your book? No, the book. book. Uh -huh. uh -huh. would, would I say that about this show? I don't you know. You cover the whole gamut. I, I mean, don't from know what, the <laughs> what could you say? <laughs> you know, it's I'm hard to <laughs> figure. You know. right. I'm here. Right, exactly. Yeah. That, that's the biggest. That's the biggest thing. Take joy in life. Um, you find people being able to take joy in life in what we do call the good and what we do call the bad, uh, what we do call positive and what we do call negative. Someday we'll understand that that idea of positive and negative is part of the illusion. That's part of the Absolutely. duality. We can't really have uh, a movie of reality or, a, or, a, or an experience like we're having here without that illusion. So it's okay to enjoy it while we're here. Absolutely. But to say that, you know, 
it exists forever. Is Nothing exists outside of the one. And that has to be experienced. Absolutely. That there's something, right. in a sense, beyond, although beyond's not a right word, you know, but there is something. We're lost for words. Right. You know, it's like I, I've said to you earlier, and I think I've said on the show a bunch of times, I mean, you know, we try to make things reasonable or understandable, but we're hurtling through space on a ball. Now, right away, it's not reasonable. No, so very subtle forces that just, like gravity, if it changed just very subtly, <laughs> we're out of here. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's now, what's reasonable about that? Uh, what's, yeah, the whole experiment is... And, and, and the things we're doing now in the name of science. Now, I love scientists. I'm one myself. But developing sophisticated electronics and uh, mechanical technology and putting it on the end of a rocket to go to space. Now, we're going to explore the stars someday, physically, but not, but right. not on the end of a Roman candle. Now, right. we know better than right. that. Right. So right. There's, there's more... We have to reach out for more technology, for more understanding of the world we live in. And we can't do that if we're locked into one way. We're, First, yeah, we're just, we're just too confined oh, in the yeah. way... Oh, yeah, got to loosen you know, up a little. It's interesting because the way I try to approach something is like approach it as if you were doing it for the first time. There was no history in yeah. a sense. Although, I mean, you don't want to eliminate that, but it's like for, on the next step, it could go anywhere. Oh, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Or and it can go back. Yeah. You know, or it can, you know, you don't know. But what's the best thing at that moment? You know, where can you go? And so you're... And look, the, let's expand, look at everything. Yeah, let's look at right. everything. Let it expand yeah. all the way that you can possibly expand it. And when, then what's the right way to approach yeah. it? Because there could be a change. There could be a quantum leap at one point, so we don't right. have to... Well, we've created the world that we live in. We're, we're the masters mm -hmm. of, our, of our world. We exist as uh, individuals interacting with it, but we also exist in what the path calls... Um, consensus reality, things about the world, things about physical reality we've all agreed on. But it still doesn't make them absolute. And one of the neat things about science is, no matter how hard set in stone the scientific principles are, there's exceptions all over Absolutely. the place. You know, and, 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 and then it turns out that they happen to be wrong. Yeah, because, uh, right. You know, five years later. I mean, that's what, you know, like, it always surprised me how people get into things. And, if you look back, you realize, like, what I thought before, oh, yeah. I changed my mind. That's so why gross. am I yeah. so locked and sure this right is now, right? Right now, This yeah. is the right. I finally got it right. There you go. Lighten up. That's what we said, right? right. Lighten up That's and, right. and, and fly give right. yourself to love. Yeah. Right. Right. So you're going to be leaving pretty soon to go back tomorrow. You're leaving to go to Washington State. Do you have any plans to, you know, do, you know, workshops or tour with the book or anything like that? Uh, I, I'm on the road uh, quite a bit and uh, I'm always carrying copies of the path with me and giving them away. Yeah, I know, I know, that's a beautiful <laughs> thing. So you're going to be, I mean, like almost, we're working on a second printing yeah. of this. Yeah, uh, we're going to uh, be supplying the distributor pretty soon, and so you'll be able to see it in a bookstore. And, you know, you said you'd call the show to find it until that time, but right. um, I hope to be doing book signings and doing tours and doing lectures and mm -hmm. uh, workshops and Just things bring, like that. Just bringing love around. Yeah. And we're going to have a lot of fun. I we're hope gonna so. We're going to have a lot of laughter. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So I guess, you know, again, we're coming near the end of the show. And uh, I did want to talk a little bit about, we have a new website. I think it's 85% complete. And by the time a lot of you see the show, it will be complete. And I want to thank Marcel and Julie and Preston over at ImageNet out of Santa Barbara. And if you go to the Bridging Heaven and Earth website, which is heaventoearth.com, you know, www.heaventoearth.com, you'll see all the different guests from all the seasons and the press releases we've done and, you know, the newspaper articles about the show and, you know, just all the information you could ever want about the show. And, and their logo's on the bottom, so if you want information about ImageNet. But they did a really spectacular job and they're doing it really out of love for bridging heaven and earth and the message it has and dedicated to the oneness and somebody has read every piece of literature about bridging this this person is doing the the coding he's read every piece of literature about bridging heaven and earth he's watched a lot of the tapes and it's just he's putting together an extraordinary page so i just wanted to thank them on the air and you know encourage everybody to look at the site it's it's www.heaventoearth.com uh, so, you know, I'd like to personally thank uh, Kate's family for, for supplying us with that uh, information and, uh, you know, and all the tapes and the videos. 
And I'd like to obviously thank Bill for being here and bringing his love and his dedication to bridging heaven and earth and to supply us with just the incredible gifts and the incredible joy and humbleness that he's bringing to us. So I'd like to thank you all again. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to thank you for all the calls that I've been getting from all over the country about the show. So good night. God bless you. And be love. Give yourself to love. Good night.